Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting an apple a day <laughs> and I'm sipping on some apple cinnamon tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today was inspired by a photograph that was sent in by one of my Patreon members by the name of Suki Su. <laughs> I have a benefit from my Patreons now that they get to submit photographs and I'll select some of them to turn into YouTube tutorials. So it's a fun thing as a thank you to whoever submits the photo that I turn into a tutorial. I send them the original so I hope she likes it. <laughs> but if you're interested in learning how to submit your photos or learning about the Patreon membership program where there's a ton of painting benefits, I have all of that information down below in the video description. I hope you enjoy. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, and chrome yellow. And of course, you can switch those up as well. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like my brushes. So that link is there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our apple and our hands. I'm gonna use my uh, pencil to do so. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna make some basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna start you out with a big, huge circle. So I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, left to right, top to bottom. For me, that's somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm just gonna kind of make mark an X to show you where the center of my canvas is. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from that about an inch and a half and over to the left, maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. So somewhere in through here is gonna be my first marker. What this is, is it's gonna be the center of my circle. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go directly up from that until I'm about an inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas. This has given us a marker or a length for how big the circle is gonna be. Now you can pull out any kind of tool. For me, I just pull out my, my paint brushes. I can measure how far I went from here to here with my paintbrush, mark it with my finger, and now I can make subsequent markers at that same distance away from that center mark. I can make as many as I want. For me, my circle is about 10, 10 and a half inches. You could certainly make your circle bigger or, I think this needs to go a little bit, something like that, bigger or smaller, 
whatever works for you is totally fine. You can make as many markers as you want to help guide you in making this big, huge circle. Once I've got my markers, all I need to do is start connecting those dots. Just making sure that I keep the arc of my um, mark circled in a, in a curved way, as opposed to just connecting them diagonally. So that's one, you know, pretty important thing that if you do use my this type of method to create a circle that you just are conscious that you're going in a curved type of um, line to connect those markers otherwise you'll have a weird like octagon -y kind of shape and I don't need it to be perfect it's an apple it doesn't have to be a perfect circle now what I'm going to do from here, that's the representing the size of my apple. I'm going to put the sleeves on, so the hands are going to be kind of wrapped around the apple, but I'm going to put the sleeves on first, so that way we can kind of just build our way to those hands with just a few fun markers. So on the right hand side, if this is about halfway up my or down my canvas, and this is about a quarter away. I'm a little bit higher than that, maybe about half of an inch to an inch. It's gonna be my first marker. Then down below, if I go straight down to the center, I'm gonna to go to the right of this about an inch and a half, make one marker, and then I'm gonna to go to the right of that about a half of an inch and make another marker. Then on the bottom left-hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna come in about one, two, about two and a half to three inches somewhere in this vicinity, give myself another marker. I'm giving you some markers just so we can connect the dots and have a easier time kind of navigating this outline. So if I find myself about halfway between here and here, so for me that's somewhere in this vicinity, and I come up until I'm about an inch and a half away from my circle, I can make myself another marker. Right now I'm gonna connect this marker to this marker to this marker. This is gonna be one of the sleeves. I'm gonna take from here and give it just a slight curve like that. And then from here, I'm gonna kinda of come over almost in a little slanted horizontal line and then drop it really quick. So something like this, and then just drop it really quick down in through here. On this right hand side, I'm going to make a diagonal line going up like this for maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and then curve it in through here. Now I'm gonna connect here to down here with a long kind of little ripply, it doesn't have to be super ripply, but kind of soft. This is just the edge of the sleeve and then just drop it into there. So that gives us sleeve on the right side and on the left side. I'm gonna do the right hand first because I think, oh, actually, no, I'm gonna do the left hand first because the right hand kind of sits behind the left hand, so it'll be a little bit easier to do um, the left hand first. So the hand is holding it like this, <laughs> something like this. I can't, I can't demonstrate because my hand's much smaller than, than this one. So I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers first and then we're just gonna connect those markers. So about halfway up my circle in through here, I'm gonna drop about an inch down, give myself a little bit of a marker there. And then if I come straight down, oops, this is the center of my camera, or my center of my circle. Come straight down to the here and go to the left about a half of an inch. It's gonna be my first thing I'm gonna do is give a little curved line in through here. Then I'm gonna take from here and I'm gonna meet it down in through here with another little curve. This is part of the palm of the hand that we're creating right now into the wrist. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna extend this maybe about another, uh, almost a full inch out into here, three quarters of an inch maybe. And now I'm going to come up from here, maybe about two, two and a half inches and to the left, just a little bit, somewhere in through here. So this is gonna represent her thumb. I thought, well, I don't know if it's a she. <laughs> Weirdly, I've made it a she in my head when all I can see is the hand. So we're, this is gonna represent this person's thumb. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this and just give it a curve and meet it right down into here. Now, down at the bottom left-hand corner of uh, the sleeve, I'm gonna come up the sleeve about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in through here. I have to connect here 
to here. This is going to be the outside of the hand. It's going to be like the thumb and then just the silhouette of the side of the hand. So I'm going to take this and first I'm going to do my difficult curve, which is going to give me just this is the edge of the thumb and the thumb knuckle. And then I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to just give it one small bump like that and then just a gentle kind of curve into this hand, the bottom of the hand in through there. Now I'm going to make the, um, the uh, forefinger in through here. So I'm going to come up. This is the center of the top of my circle. I'm going to the left of that about two, two and a half inches, somewhere in through here. And then on my thumb, I'm going to go about right about here. And I can just connect these a little bit of a curve up in through here. And then just a diagonal line to connect those two. And then there's a little tiny uh, sliver of the middle finger in through there. I'm going to erase a couple of lines. Um, right now I'm just going to erase this line in through here. I don't need to erase it all the way, but enough so it doesn't distract me during my painting process because this is the hand that's outside of the, um, outside of the apple. So just erase that so it doesn't confuse you. Now I'm going to go to the other hand. I'm first going to make what's going to be the little uh, forefinger sticking out up in through here. So just give myself a little, little bump in through there. On this side in through here, we've got the thumb is a little bit more kind of jutted out, the knuckle part. So I'm going to make a marker right in through here and then right about in through here. So this is about halfway between here and the top of the circle. So somewhere in through here, that's where I've got that marker. I'm going to take this, you know, horizontal way and then just bump it up just a little bit for that kind of thumb knuckle. And now I can connect here to here, similarly to how I did on the other side. So I've got my thumb kind of knuckle, and then I've just got the silhouette of the side of the hand. This one maybe isn't as bumpy as the other one is, so something like that. Now I want to close it off like I did in through here. So this one is going to close off. Um, somewhere about, let's see, this is halfway up, just a little bit shy, a little bit below that, somewhere in through here, and then it, it crosses over um, somewhere in through here. So I'm going to just take this and just connect these two like this. This whole interior area is going to be the hands and the shadow of the hands going in, but I do want to kind of have myself the idea of where kind of these palms, in essence, almost disappear underneath that um, into the shadows. So I'm just going to kind of give myself this little bit of a curve in through here and bring extend this down in through here. So this is this will, that's going to kind of disappear underneath that apple. But I want to get that idea of where the brightest or the brighter parts are leading into that darkness. And then up and through here, I also kind of want to understand where, like I have in through here, this edge eats, meets that thumb area. So I'm just going to kind of extend this up in through here, just so I have a good kind of understanding as to where like that, um, the edge of the hand kind of extends into the fingers. And then I'm going to erase this line that of the apple that it will sit behind the hand in through here. And then that's all I'm going to do for my outline. You can certainly modify it however you want, make little fiddling adjustments. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting a base coat on the entire canvas. I'm going to use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, white, and red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be just using my red as my base coat for my apple, black for the background, and then we'll make two custom grays for the skin and the sleeves. So I have pre-mixed my two custom grays on my palette. I have a dark gray and a light gray. And how I got to them is just black and white. So I'm going to be using the dark gray for the sleeves and the light gray for the skin. And how I decided what I was going to be doing was I just, when I was looking at the photo reference that I'm using, I looked for the main um, mid tone that I was seeing in these areas. And that's what I'm going to be using as the base color. 
I will be um, adding highlights and shadows to give form and all the uh, details to them, but this is representing the main mid-tone that I was seeing in these sections. So the, the lighter gray is just a tiny bit of black with the white, and then the, um, the darker one is just more black in the equation. So once you have these all set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my background, which is gonna be just black paint. I don't need to do any special brush stroke when applying any of these because I know I've got lots of stuff that I'm gonna be um, painting on top later on. So right now I'm really just looking to get a base coat on. Typically I, I don't do my sketch first. I like to kind of work from the back of the canvas forward, but this particular composition that I'm doing the apple was huge the hands are huge so i almost i i just didn't want to overwork the um the painting i just thought that this was going to be a little bit easier of an approach so that's why i chose to do it this way and the background um on on the photo reference this this black area that i'm doing now is just a bunch of grass and sticks and out of focus type of um nature stuff so i don't have to worry about um the difficulty of putting that behind my main objects which is to normally why i do my um i build objects on top of other objects because i'm a i oh that just made that a little bit i <laughs> lost my lost my outline there i'm just being mindful of my outline right now so i don't make these um objects too much smaller than than they should be so i'm just kind of going cautiously around the edges if i bump into them that's okay um but like i was saying i like to paint from the back forward and put objects on top of things so it gives it a more natural appearance as you know things sit in front of other things but for this one, again, I knew how large these other objects were, so I just didn't um, think it was too wise to have to paint everything, you know, too much. So that's why I'm opting to do it this way, and it gives you a good lesson on how to make sure that you pay attention to the edges of <laughs> your objects. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to work uh, on the next object, which is going to be... I'm going to work on the light gray areas because they're behind my apple. So that's the, it, mostly, they're a little bit in front here, but I'm going to choose to do that light gray area next, which is going to be my skin. So again, as I'm going through this, this line in through here, my, my pencil line, my paint uh, is student grade paint and it tends to be transparent or translucent. So I will most likely see those um those outlines underneath as i'm going around the edges where it's meeting my my background i'm not concerned about it being perfect at this point again this is just going to be my base coat so i'm just kind of slowing down but being mindful of not making it too big like i just went outside my lines right there which i'm okay because again i know what the background is going to be looking like with all of the um sticks and just out of focus kind of grass and stuff like that so it's going to be a messy background anyways so i don't have to be terribly concerned about if i go outside my lines with my um with my skin tone i'm going to just um i think i'm going to save this little area for the dark gray so i'm gonna i'm gonna save that little area and put dark gray in through there so i have that um immediate kind of transition from the the light to the dark in the inside of the hand. So again, just kind of pulling this down in through here, making sure I've got all the way here and trying not to make my fingers too big. But again, if you go outside your lines, you can always, um, during the fine tuning steps, you can always modify and get it back into its, its shape that you had wanted just going down here. And if you're running into wet black, like I may be running into in some areas, again, it's all right. We're so in the infant stage of this painting. That's why I'm using a big brush. I don't even need to be concerned about those 
little fine-tuned details. I'm going to use this big brush and these little tiny <laughs> fingers up and through here because I can, because I know that um, I know I've got a lot of work ahead of me and fussing over these little tiny perfections this early in the in the game it's not worth it to me because I know what what's in store for me and all the other details that I'm going to be doing so I fuss later I don't need to fuss right now I I say I fuss <laughs> I'm usually okay with not being perfect on my painting so so that's looking good now I'm going to go into my dark gray you could certainly wash and dry your brush if you want to um, I feel like I've got I don't have too much paint on my brush, so I could probably just go right into my dark gray. Let me just make sure I've got these nice and flat. That looks good. I'm just going to pick up my dark gray without washing my brush and just get these areas on and through here. Again, knowing that I've got lots of work to go, I could have opted to wash my brush or not. It's all right. It, I'm going to be adding lots of details and tones and especially these sleeves. These sleeves are going to be fun because they've got some interesting texture to them. So I'm excited to um, get that on and explore the different textures that we can paint and create with, with strategic mark making. <laughs> and then just this dark gray is coming on in through this section. And then again, I'm going to use this dark gray also in that tiny little inside section of the hand. And of course, as you're, as you're painting, I am using a photo reference for this one, but if you um, wanted to change anything, feel free to do so. I'm, I'm going off of what I see in a photo, but if you want to make different, you know, clothing or a different type of fruit or, you know, a ball or anything else, feel free to, to modify this. You could, I'm doing a grayscale painting with, well, we'll call it monochromatic, I guess, because we do have a pop of red in there, but I'm doing primarily a grayscale painting. You could certainly use skin tones if you wanted to. Um, so that's, that would be totally up to you. Skin tones and grass tones and, you know, you can make any realistic colors in here if you wanted to. And again, this is just that dark gray. There's going to be a big transition from the palm into the, um, underneath the apple. So I just wanted a, a nice kind of dark color in through there just to start that process. So now I'm definitely going to wash and dry my brush because I want to do a red base for my apple. My red is very transparent. So I could erase those two markers in through there, but I'm not going to. So you can see how to cover them and um, how they're going to look underneath. Oops, now we got red in the hand too. That was a little exciting. Um, I'm, I want to force myself to show you how, like if you have visible pencil marks, how you're going to get rid of them over the course of your painting. So right now, I'm, I don't care that they're there because I, again, I know how much work I have to go on this painting. So I'm going to just ignore them right now, knowing that they're there. If you struggle with covering marks such as this, you could have, of course, erased them before we started and or you could paint white paint on top of them that will uh, give you like a primer coat on top of them and then you'll be able to cover them with any color of paint that you want. So there's many different methods but for me again knowing that I've got a lot of work to, to go on this painting and that I want to show you how through the process those marks can just disappear on their own. If you're, if you're fully executing your layers and you're fully executing all the other information in the painting, you should have, by the time you're done, regardless of what type of paint you're using, you should have it covered well enough to disguise or make any of those guidelines disappear. Just for me, I like to force myself. I love layering because I feel it makes um, things have a little bit more life to them. And leaving something like this will force me to put tons of layers. And I just ran into my hand again. 
we're just going to roll with it because I know I can cover it later. And then that's all I'm going to be doing for this step. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the background. I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are black and white. And I might just tap into that dark gray and light gray as I feel the need. What I'm going to be doing, I really want this to just look like it's out of focus ground stuff. <laughs> so I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot other than I'm going to be making little lighter patches here and there. And then I'll be making some kind of um, little... Uh, textural type of marks to indicate maybe some pieces of grass or something. The, the trick here is to not go white and to use several values of the gray tones. So I'm going to start with black and my dark gray. So black and my dark gray is going to give me something darker than my dark gray that I already have. And I can create these kind of sections of tones throughout this, um, throughout this area. So I can take and I can say, okay, well, next to the hand and through here, maybe I just want a little lighter shade in through there. I don't want to get rid of all of my black, but I do want to have varying tones throughout this. So by choosing to use my dark gray and black on my brush right now, this is giving me some areas that are going to be a little bit lighter than black and are going to allow me to still have some good depth in this gravel or grassy type of area. So I'm going to, sometimes I pick up a little bit more of the light or of the dark gray, sometimes a little bit less. I'm using kind of a circular type of brush stroke, allowing for this to almost blend into that gray background or the black background. So that way it just looks like various tones. It doesn't, at this point, I'm not putting a ton of texture in it. I'm really just kind of um, providing a um, multi-toned ground that I'm going to put the sticks and pieces of grass on top of. So that's what that's my goal right now is just creating those multiple tones within the ground before I start adding um, little sticks and stuff like that or the little pieces of grass or the evidence of those pieces of grass. And again, I know that this is grayscale and this grassy stuff is kind of out of focus. So I'm not terribly concerned about anything looking hyper realistic here, just giving it the impression. So that was one tone that I just did. Now I can go into my dark gray plus a little bit of my light gray and I can start making little extra um, lighter areas. So this is going to be maybe some little pieces of grass and some little textural type of stuff in through here. I'm going to just bring a couple little pieces in through here. I'm kind of like dabbing it and um, uh, giving like these little gestural marks. You can put a tiny bit of water on your brush as well and that'll give you kind of these um, uh, softer type of appearance for these little um, marks and stuff that you're doing. You don't have to do anything really super fancy. I'm just going for something that's going to give me the illusion of some textural elements on this gr on, on the ground underneath. So again, right now I'm using my dark gray and my light gray plus a little bit of water on my brush. Every time I go for a lighter area, I'm going to be making it um, in a smaller type of um, section than I did uh, with that uh, first layer of the dark gray. So what this does is it allows me to keep the, um, the elements of that of dimension with those little dark spots 
and it provides me with this additional um, layer of information on top. I am watching around my hands because I want to make sure that I it looks like this stuff sits behind the hands as well. I don't want to leave a big black ring around my hands. So I have to really consciously, because I didn't do that background first, I have to really consciously make sure that I am attending to that as well. Um, and I keep kind of putting some, some water on my brush just to uh, get these various tones in through here. And a minute, in a minute, I'll start doing um, some more grass-like uh, brush strokes, but again, I, in the photo, I'm seeing this all as really kind of out of focus, um, just varying tones of grays and various little textures. So I'm still kind of using either a rubbing, dotting, or dashing type of um, brush stroke. You bump into that hand; that'll make it um, make sh that'll ensure that you have not uh, missed those areas. I'm going to put some more over here on the left side. So dark gray, light gray, plus a little bit of um, water on my brush. Maybe we've got a couple of little sticks in through here or pieces of grass. And I'm going to, in a minute, start making little longer kind of pieces in through here. It looks like we've got lots of little pieces in through here. The um, Depending on what kind of element you want this to look like, you can certainly just do a real kind of abstracty type of uh, background. You could do a solid color for the background. You could really make this into whatever style that you'd like. Um, but again, I'm trying to emulate the uh, photo reference that I'm using. You could, of course, make it into anything that you'd like. There's a whole bunch of little like sticks and grass and stuff down in through here. And you could also use a smaller brush too. So as I go through this process, I might even um, switch to my, my uh, smaller brush if I find that I'm not uh, able to get the smaller marks that, that I um, am longing for. But again, that's going to be totally up to you. Again, right now, I haven't... Um, added white to my brush or anything like that. I'm just kind of using my light gray um, with a touch of my dark gray and a little bit of water. I'm progressively getting lighter right now and I'm using that water on my brush in order to give me almost this transparency throughout these little um, marks and stuff that I'm making so they can appear as if they're kind of um, Again, just out of focus. I'm trying to follow um, uh, the with my brush pattern. I'm trying to follow the um, the direction of marks and stuff that I'm seeing in the photograph. But again, no need to make it really hyper realistic for this background. Simply because it is in grayscale. I am. Um, knowing that it's an out of focus type of um, appearance. I'm just trying not to go all the way white. I just picked up a little bit more um, light gray because I'm seeing in the photo it's a little bit lighter up in this area. And then I'm going to just kind of pop in a couple of the lighter gray colors in um, the areas that I'm seeing it in the photo. Again, not necessary to totally follow that um, every single mark, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to emulate the patterns, the color patterns that I'm seeing, how it goes from kind of dark to light. I've got real deep uh, black sections in through a couple of areas. I can see that there's a couple of little pieces of grass. There's a stick in through here. And as I am kind of bringing this to um, I went around it. This is like my third time going around it. As I'm as I'm going through it like this third time, I'm watching my photo and I'm saying, oh, there's a little pop of a bright thing over and through here. So let me just kind of make that extra light spot over and through there. And that's going to give you that little realistic kind of appearance to it. There's a bunch of light stuff in through here. So I'm just kind of 
watching that photo, I don't even really care what it is. I'm just watching, you know, if I'm doing a stick or a piece of grass or, you know, a leaf. I don't know what it is. It's out of focus. So I'm just following like these little light marks and say, oh, it's lighter over there. Maybe I've got um, there's a bunch of light stuff over here. Maybe this is um, being hit with sunshine or something. So I'm just kind of going a little bit lighter over here. I have not picked up white yet. I did say that I would be using white, but I haven't used white yet. I've used my light gray a bunch um, and I don't even think I use black. So, so far I've just used light, uh, light gray and dark gray. Um, and then again, I'm using some water on my brush with these two colors in conjunction with one another. And if I felt as I was um, going through this that I, I needed it to, to amp up, or if I felt that the, um, that's looking pretty good. I just had to set my head back. Um, if I felt that I was missing some of the contrast or I needed it to, um, amp up a little bit more. I could certainly, right now I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint. You could certainly pop in just a couple little pops of white here and there. That's going to just uh, explain to the viewer that there are little, maybe teeny tiny sections of um, bright white here and there. But Again, I'm, I'm scared of the white because I want to use the white on parts of the hands and I don't want it to get to um, lost in the shuffle. So I'm thinking that I'm, I'm pretty good with how this is uh, appearing. I'm just gonna go do a couple more little pieces of uh, texture over and through here, maybe a little bit up and through here. And then you can certainly play with yours as much as you want. If you felt that you needed uh, more values in it, you could certainly pick a color between the two of them. You could even add a little bit of red or yellow to put some brownish tones in there, but I wanted to go full gray scale on this one. So we're going to stay away from browns in my um, gray this time, which if you follow me, you know, I love to use brown in my gray and I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to, I'm going to refrain. I feel like there's some more little pieces of grass over in here. So again, I'm just using my varying shades of the grays in order to give myself some nice little light pops of, um, it, information and texture and then fiddle with this as much as you want. We're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the second layer to the apple. I'm using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, red, white, and yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to designate where the center of the apple is going to go. We're going to do a second layer on the apple with it being brighter at that top of the apple. There's going to be a little yellow um, spot within the inside of the apple and it's going to fade down to it being darker down at the bottom. I'm going to, so I'm going to have a shadow at the bottom of the apple and then we'll have that lighter area in the middle. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and yellow, a little bit of white and yellow. I'm going to put in place where I want the center of the apple to be. So for me, I'm going to come up from the center of my circle up maybe about an inch and a half somewhere in through here and I'm going to put this like curved type of line in through here. I'm using um, so much white or making this so light in this initial pass because of the red background that we put on it. I'll be putting some some shadows and stuff like that in this center area. But right now I just kind of want to get my my idea of where I want that color pattern to go with the um, yellow type of an area and then we will um, we'll get it to blend in later. This this lightness that I'm putting on right now is ha will help me get a nice vibrant tone in those yellows. So again, I'm just kind of following um, the color pattern that I'm seeing on the Apple um, photo that I'm using, but you could certainly make your own kind of color that you want. Maybe you want to do a Granny Smith apple that's nice and yellow. <laughs> I'm putting soft edges around 
um, this color pattern so that way I can get it to blend in nicely with my red. So that's looking pretty good. There's a couple of little spots in through here. So I think I need this out a little bit farther. Yeah, let's bring that out just a little bit farther. And then I'm gonna just put a little bit more of my yellow and white. Just give myself just a couple of little lighter spots in through here maybe down in through here just kind of watching what's going on in that in the photo little light spots are gonna make this all nice and realistic looking and then just maybe a little bit rubbing my brush up and through there so the rest of the apple is going to be dark at the bottom and work its way to light at the top so i'm going to actually wash and dry my brush while this is settling i'm going to start at the bottom with red and a tiny tiny touch of black paint so red plus a teeny touch of black paint on my brush the black can very easily take over you can always add more but it's tough to take it away once it's on there i'm going to start down in through here and kind of just rub it into that apple i'm being too cautious let's add some more paint so we can actually see it there we go <laughs> and i want it to be pretty dark like it's all it's gonna in essence kind of blend in with that hand where you can almost barely detect the difference between the two so i do want it to be pretty darn dark at the bottom but again don't want that black to um scare me and take over so i'm adding more red to my brush right now so i can get a little shadow um, where the apple also meets that hand on this side and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so i have a little bit of um, the remnants of the black on my brush but not enough so i'm adding just a little bit more because i do definitely want there to be a shadow area where it meets that hand so that's looking pretty good just going to kind of softly blend that out i'm picking up red now and i'm going to use red for bring it all the way up these sides so for me the apple kind of is going like this so from this point on i'm going to probably just use a circular type of brush stroke i like to use the side of my brush um, to give myself this second kind of um, pass on here and I'm using it in a direction that I feel is um, similar to the little markings on the apple as well as the contour of the apple. So I got some little wet darkness down in through here so I can just kind of pull that up and that looks great. And there's some darkness on this right hand side. So I'm gonna use uh, red with a itty bitty bit of black. Again, just a teeny tiny bit and just kind of give myself just a little bit more darkness over here like this. So I'm creeping up on my um, little marker in through here. And again, I'm not terribly concerned about it yet. Um, I'm gonna just kind of keep, keep on my quest. And if there comes a point where I'm like, okay, now I really need it to get covered and it's not covering, then I can certainly um, attend to it. But right now I'm pretty satisfied with um, the amount of color and coverage I'm getting. Again, I'm just going into red right now, bringing this all the way around these edges like this. I might add a little bit more darkness later around those edges, but I'm gonna just go roll with it right now. And if I feel later I want a little bit more shadow on my final touches, I'll do that. Um, but that's looking pretty good as far as that coverage goes now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of lightness up in through here so this is going to be red with a teeny tiny touch of white on my brush so red with a teeny tiny touch of white this is going to be this whole large area up in through here so for me my red is a pretty true red it doesn't turn too too pink it turns more light red when i add the white to it but if your red turns too pink for your liking, you can certainly add a bit of a touch of yellow into it and that'll help to um, counteract that pinkness. But I'm digging the way that this is looking, so I'm just rolling with it red with a touch of white. I've got um, this whole area in through here. So I'm kind of going um, where this light 
area is here. Think of that as kind of like the the crown of the, I don't know if that's the right word, <laughs> the top um, area of the apple in through here. So I'm just adding these light tones so it will um, take on that, the vibrancy at the top of the apple that I am seeing. So just a little bit more in through here. And again, you could make yours lighter or darker and we do have another layer to go. So this is, this again is just kind of our, um, preliminary round in order to get it um, to start these color patterns. I just added a little bit more because I wanted a little bit more in through here, intermingling with my yellow marks. And then I'm, I'll pull some of this down the, um, the apple itself, but not this light. So just making sure this is as light as I want it up and through here. I think up here, I want a touch lighter right in through here. So I just added a little bit more white and red up and through here and again i'm keeping i'm putting my brush in the direction of the contour of the apple so i feel like it would be curving like that so that's the direction i'm putting this highlight in and now i'm just going to kind of let myself kind of run out of paint coming down these sides you could certainly add a little bit of moisture to your brush or a little bit i'm picking up a little bit more red as i'm kind of and maybe just a touch more white as I'm coming in through here, just so I can get a little bit extra vibrancy and texture. And then once you've got that done, I'm feeling like that's a great start for here. We'll, we'll add all of the detail in through here, as well as the little stem and all that good stuff. We'll add that later. Um, and we'll add more texture onto the apple later as well. But I'm feeling like this is a great start for it. So I am going to call it on this one. We're gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer on the hands or the skin. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, dark gray, light gray, and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is putting in place all of my deep dark shadows, making sure I understand where the contours are for like the knuckles and things of that nature, and putting a second layer onto the skin so we can have a nice um, transition into our fine tuned details, which we'll do in a, in a separate step. So I'm gonna start with my dark areas and work my way to the light. I know that I wanna have a real deep dark area in through here where my shadow of my hands kind of merges in with the shadow of the um, apple. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black paint with a little bit of water on my brush. So black plus a little bit of water. And I'm gonna get this little dark area in here to just kind of disappear or fade from the apple to the skin. So that's just a quick trick to make it look like it really goes deep in there and that these two are just kind of merging into one another, not merging into one another, but th that it just really goes nice, deep, dark into there. So then once I've got that in place, now I can start working my way out towards um, the lighter areas, but I'm gonna just put a little bit more water on my brush so I can get um, my little shadow going in between my hands in through here. So this hand is in front of this hand. So I'm gonna put the shadow on the, um, on the bottom hand, something like this. So this is just a little bit of watered down black paint. It's transparent. It's allowing for me to just kind of map out this, this shadowy kind of area in a, um, in a gentle kind of way. And then we'll get it to blend into that um, skin in a bit. I'm gonna also do the same thing right in through here where this hand kind of, um, the palm of the hand kind of disappears in back in through there. So just a little softness on this edge like that. I'm gonna go up into these fingers now with a little bit of watered down black paint on my, um, on my brush. So this is gonna be the little um, crease of the fingers. So I'm gonna take it from here. We're gonna have one in through there. We're gonna have one kind of up in through here. And then this is the inside crease 
of this forefinger. So I'm doing it pretty dark just in this deep um, little crevice here. I will lighten it up or um, lighten it up as it goes away from this area. But right now, just kind of getting my, my little darkness on so I can have um, a believable transition out of this dark area. So something like that, that works for me. I'm gonna pull this just a little bit higher. This is the little crease on the finger and then just kind of get this to blend up just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna to go to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. So a little bit of watered down black paint. There's a little shadow in through here. So again, this is just watered down black paint. I use watered, I use my black paint thinned out a lot because I can get it to um, spread. I can have it concentrated in one area like right in this little tiny deep dark area in through here and because it's watered down I can have some control over it and just kind of thin it out and it creates this nice gradation on top of that finger. I want to do the same thing on the thumb in through here. So the thumb is going to kind of crease in through here. I've got the edge of my thumb like that, my brush isn't cooperating, so I need to spin it in my paint with a little, I have too much water on my brush, so my, my bristles are like, hey, we're just gonna splay out on you. So I'm gonna take this and just kind of go like that, and then this area in through here, I can spread out that thinned out paint and get it to uh, go lighter and lighter as it goes farther away from this one area. And of course, I'm gonna manipulate this more as I go through the painting process, but that gets me started in a nice um, gradation. So that's good. I have my little fingers up here, but they don't have those deep dark shadows in them, so I don't want to um, over darken them. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to go into my, um, let's see, I'm going to use my light gray plus a little bit of dark gray to put my shadowy areas on the exterior part of the skin. So this is gonna be kind of on the hand on this bottom side. So I start with my light gray and I've got a touch of the dark gray on there as well. So this is my thumb in through here. And this, this is one knuckle, this is this knuckle right here, and then this knuckle sits somewhere down here. I feel like I need this bumped out just a little bit more to take account for that in through there. So something like that. And then this is gonna give me this kind of shadowy side of the hand, something like this. I do have some of this down in through here as well. This is gonna be the, um, like the, the side of the hand in through there. So when I'm doing hands and things of this nature that take on lots of, con I have so many different contours to them, especially since we're doing grayscale. I know that it's a little bit trickier, but I still am mindful as to what, what am I seeing? What, what does this area represent? And I often equate it to my own body and what my hand does uh, or what that body part on me does and I can it it makes the process a little bit easier for me to digest on the canvas and again this is grayscale and we're not it it's not high contrast for the um, the photo that I'm I'm looking at so as I'm going through this process I know that I don't need these um, there's not lots of wrinkles in this skin there's not lots of muscles and stuff in the skin. I feel like it is a younger person's skin, so I don't need a lot of incredible information. I'm just really looking to have this smooth surface um, and have it believable what's happening here. So I'm, I'm seeing a little bit lighter in through here, so I just picked up my um, light gray, and then I'm just gonna kind of get it to blend into that s slightly darker area that we did. So that's gonna be the whole process here is just um, doing little variations. Like I just picked up my light gray plus a touch of my dark gray to get um, this upper 
finger portion in through here and I keep picking up. I just picked up a little bit more of my light gray just to get that to uh, blend in a little bit. And I know that I have a second step coming, so I don't need to go all the way yet. I am definitely um, allowing for the um, mental <laughs> thought that I'm not done yet and I have more to go. I'm picking up more of my light gray. Um, again, just getting these contours in here. I feel like this area in through here is um, the, the this big part on your thumb. So I'm going to just bring this over in through here. It seems like it's a little bit lighter up on this knuckle in through here. So I'm just using my light gray right now um, to you to, in my lighter areas. I haven't picked up white. Um, I don't know if I'm going to. I'm right now just playing with my light gray and my dark gray. It's pretty light coming down in through here. So I, I'm just picking up my light gray. So I have a second coat on the, um, I almost called it fur, <laughs> the second coat on the skin. So something like that. Uh, in through here, I feel like it's going to get pretty darn light right in through here, but I want to um, first just make sure I've got a pretty uh, crisp kind of edge where it's meeting the apple. Again, I know I have another layer on the apple and I have another layer on the skin. So this, these are the times where you are going to, you know, have to be a little mindful of what happens as your as these two objects are touching. But you know, it's all a painting process, so <laughs> you can certainly um, fix it as you go if you if you bump into it too much. So that looks pretty good, nice and smooth in through there. It looks like it gets a little bit darker down here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light gray plus my dark gray in order to account for it getting just a little bit darker down in through here. And right now I'm just, I'm watching the photo and I'm saying, okay, well, I see that it's the lightest kind of in through here and on the top of here, but down here needs to shift a little bit to, to be a little bit darker to um, account for the contours down in through here, but it all needs to talk to each other. So I keep making sure that those sections are well blended with one another. And again, knowing that I have another layer coming, I don't need it to be perfect, just kind of um, understanding what part is doing what and getting that, that you know, solid base on there. In through here, I'm going to go with light gray. Um, I might touch it up. I might do a little uh, tip with white on these guys because I feel like um, they're not going to need a whole heck of a lot, but definitely just light gray in order to start them. They're pretty darn light on the um, on the photo. Um, it looks like there might be a couple little um, dark er marks. I'm going to pick up just a teeny tiny bit of my dark gray. Looks like maybe about halfway up that finger we've got a little tiny bit of um, the where the um, finger bends. Maybe just an itty bitty bit itty bitty bit. There we go. I'm going to pick up a touch of white. Just give a little tiny bit on the tip. Oh, my brush was too dirty on that one. Pick up a little bit more white now. A little tiny bit on the tip of that one and on the tip of that one. And again, I've got another step to go, so I'm not concerned. Just doing a second layer on this little finger in through here and then going over to this side. Again, same thing, just going to um, pick up my light gray plus a touch of dark gray for anywhere that needs to have these little side shadows. So I feel like in through here we would have one of those to uh, for the side of this thumb in through here. So this is my light gray plus um, a touch of my dark gray just to get this little tiny area darkened up just a little bit there and then maybe a smudge in through there just so we can see just the hint of a, a little bit of a gradation or a little gradient shift in through there. Uh, let's see, where else do I see it? So we've got uh, my dark gray plus, or my light gray plus a tiny touch of my dark gray. I feel like we need to do that in through here. That's too much of my dark gray. Wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit more of my light gray and just get this to go lighter as it goes up this finger in through here. And again, it's okay if it's not perfect right now. We're just getting uh, these little, these initial 
um, highlights and shadows on for, to show the contour. So again, this finger is similar to the other one where it's pretty um, dark inside here and then it gets really light up at the top. But we'll do all of that in a little bit. That looks pretty good. This down here, I'm gonna do, um, this is just the remnants of, on my brush with the um, light gray and dark gray just to kind of get that to shadow in through there. That looks pretty good. I'm picking up now my light gray just to kind of give this whole area a second coat. And then I think I've got just a touch of down here where I'm gonna have the um, little bit of the dark gray and then maybe a little bit of lightness up on this top. This is just my light gray right now, um, accounting for this in through here and then just pulling this over this little knuckle area and then down this side this is going to be really light in through here but again I needed to um, touch that that apple so I'm going light gray with just a tiny and eh, more light gray just do similar to what I have on the other side I know again that there's um, I've got to, I have that final layer to go, so I know that that's all coming. This looks pretty solid and light in through here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of my dark gray plus my light gray down in through this area just to give myself that second coat. And then that's all I'm going to do for this step. Once I've got this done, I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. <laughs> so you can just wash it. Let me just make sure that this is a little bit smoother in through here. There we go. That looks pretty good. So you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the second step on the sleeves. So I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are black and dark gray and light gray. What I'm gonna do on this step is I am gonna put the form on these sleeves and we're gonna start the textural element. So again, the texture on these is pretty cool. I don't know if it was like a little jean jacket or something, but it, or tweed, tweed or something, but it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna um, first put the form in where we can see that it's lighter, in certain areas and darker in other areas for the form and then we'll start the texture. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my light gray. I don't know what colors I said. Light gray, dark gray, black. I think that's it. <laughs> um, so I definitely want to put some light gray up in through here. As I'm doing this, I know that I don't want to um, totally take away the initial um, gray layer that we put. So I'm going to be doing this very messily. <laughs> so I'm going to start and I'm going to take, this will be kind of my lighter area, and I am doing it in a direction that I feel that the um, fabric is going. So as I'm doing this, it's starting my textural element. I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush so I can kind of continue on this quest. I'm going in the direction that I feel the, um, the pattern of the, the fabric is going and I'm going to have it darker down here on the left hand side. So as I come towards this left hand side, I'm starting to pick up a touch of black. Just a, a, when I say a touch, I mean it's just a teeny tiny touch with a touch of water on my brush and I'm going to kind of start just doing that in this direction over here. So I just am starting that um, textural element with my gradation that I'm doing. So on this one, I've got a similar uh, thing. I know that it's, it's strange because it's got like its lighter areas kind of down at the bottom and a little bit on the left. So I'm going to start with a little bit of that light gray and the, um, the pattern kind of almost comes straight down to the bottom of the canvas, whereas this one went to the right. So this is gonna go straight down. So I'm gonna take it from here and just kind of pull these um, fast marks 
going down towards the bottom of the canvas. I'm gonna do a section kind of in through here as well. So when I'm doing, trying to emulate these faux finishes, or it, it, it's a textural element, but it's kind of, I, I think it's funny because it's kind of like a faux finish, right? Like you do on, on painting, on wood and stuff like that. So that's in essence kind of what I'm doing, but I need to, um, so I don't get hung up in the details. I like to uh, try and start these textural things while I'm doing like the contours or the gradations and just allowing for um, that element to just start to, to work itself out. And if I can do this in a successful way, putting those really intricate details on at the end will be an easier process. I'm picking up a little bit of um, black with a touch of water on my brush now to put what is gonna be my darker areas over here and there's not too many of them. I'm gonna put a couple more dark areas on the right hand side. It doesn't go dark on this one like this one does here. So I do see a couple of little dark areas like in through in through here. So this is black plus a little bit of water on my brush and I'm hardly touching my canvas right now. I've got some there. I've got a little spot in through here. I've got some little bits down in through here. So right now I'm just kind of putting, I'm looking to see where my dark marks are and I'm just putting some in there. So, but within that same directional brush stroke. I'm gonna do a couple of these um, darker areas on the right hand side. So black plus a little bit of water. So again, I'm watching um, my picture to see where, where I see almost like these little, um, divots of sorts within the material. So I don't know if it's by the, um, some of the seams or, or, you know, whatever is making these little marks. I'm not quite sure, but we're gonna, we're gonna just emulate it and see if we can get something that looks pretty darn similar. And again, I'm seeing quite a few kind of up at the, um, kind of by the edge of the sleeve on this one. So I'm just kind of going for it. I feel like there's a pretty big one in through here. And again, this is just one of those steps. I'm, I'm trying to create this like little faux finish. So as I'm doing this, this is helping to um, start that process for me. And just a little bit more in through here. I'm gonna put a touch more water on my brush so I can make this a little bit more fluid. That looks pretty good in through there. So I'm thinking that that's all I need. Maybe a little bit more up in through here. Oh yeah, let's put a little bit around this, the little um, sleeve area up in through here. And again, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna have a fun like um, final step to this textural stuff. I'm looking for my almost black areas right now on the photo so I can see, um, so I can put those on now and then um, we can build the the lighter stuff around it later. And again, I'm putting it in the direction that I'm seeing it in the photo. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good, maybe a little bit darker in through here. And then we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can um, put this brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the apple. I'm using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, red, yellow, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know, because I only have my grays to use. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna use them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pre-mix myself a brown color, and we're gonna be using that for the stem. We'll put some shadows inside this little area, and then we're gonna put some great detail around and give it one final layer. So I have pre-mixed myself a brownish tone on my uh, palette down here. So how I got to this color was red, yellow, and black. So red and yellow is gonna make orange. So I mixed some red, a little bit, or a yellow with a little bit of red. The red can easily overpower. So I'm just adding 
the um, I think I need a little bit more yellow in through there to make it a nice kind of like deep orange color. I'm, I'm tainting it a little bit with the brown that's sitting next to it, but this is where I started with my red and my yellow, and then I add just a touch of black at a time. So the black can very easily take over. So just add it a little tiny dot at a time until you achieve like, see, I just have a teeny tiny dot on my brush until you achieve the color that you're looking for. So my brown that I'm going for is uh, has a little greenish hue to it because the black and the yellow will make a greenish tone which is very similar to what I'm seeing in this apple. So that's where I'm headed with my brown tone. So once I have that accomplished, I'm going to start building my stem. So I'm gonna have my stem uh, coming out in through here. So just making, you know, you can make yours bigger or smaller, whatever works for you. And then just kind of bringing it up around in through here. I'm gonna color this right now. I'm gonna actually be making it lighter later, <laughs> this tippy top, but I want this on here just so I have a, a jumping off point so I can see it and I, and I know where it is. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm now gonna use this brown with a touch of black. So I'm, I actually think I'm gonna just make it a little bit darker um, as I go into my um, my areas inside the apple. So I just added a touch more black. And if that's too green for you, you can always add just a teeny tiny touch of red to it. So if it's too green, that just means that there's a lot of yellow in it. You can just add a tiny bit of um, red to it. And then I'm gonna take this with a little bit of water on my brush just so I don't, uh, so it doesn't get away from me. And I'm gonna put this real dark kind of shadow inside my um, inside my apple and then just kind of pull it up. And I could have done this before I did the stem, but um, in the photo reference, I see that there's almost like a little glow around that stem. So I kind of wanted to not screw with that. So I just decided to put the stem on first. You could certainly do it in any order that you want. Now, what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up yellow and white because it kind of blends, this dark tone blends in with the yellow and white. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white on my brush and I'm gonna start um, blending this out and up. I'm gonna put a little bit more water on my brush so I can get it to go a little bit further. There we go. And again, if it's too, too, too green on you, you can certainly um, wash your brush and just put a little bit of, um, just pick up the yellow and the white. As I'm doing um, my fruit, <laughs> whenever I do these kind of fruit um, things, I know that these colors kind of all just blend together. Uh, they transition from one color to a next, a, a, a nice gradient. So that's that's where I head whenever I whenever I'm doing this kind of stuff is I know that they're going to be all kind of talking to each other so I'm just keep picking up my yellow and my my dirty yellow and my white right now to get this to kind of pull out and just make sure that it is as large of an area as I want it to be it's looking pretty good and that it's blending the way I want I want a little bit more white in this because it's not as light as I want it. So there we go. Now we got the pop that we want. And then you can certainly, um, you know, make this into whatever color apple that you want. It This particular one goes a little bit darker down in, in the center area um, as it transitions out into the um, red area or out of the interior of the apple. It gets a little bit lighter. So uh, lighter in, um, in tonal value, not necessarily lighter in it being more vibrant in yellow, but um, you could certainly make it more vibrant if you want. And I just kind of keep flipping back and forth between my yellow and my white right now to give these lighter areas on this top of the apple. And again, I'm just kind of watching the, um, the photo reference that I'm using to see where these um, light spots are traveling to and um, trying to emulate them to the best of my ability. I feel like there's a this area right here is a little bit larger than I had originally um, made a footprint for. 
So I'm just kind of extending that a little bit. And then again, I'm giving it the soft edges. This is still my yellow and white with a little bit of water on my brush. I'm getting it to a little bit uh, whiter or lighter in this area in through here with less yellow. I'm kind of working towards this little guy right here, which is that pencil mark. We're just gonna get him to go away right now. <laughs> just extend that mark a little bit. And these will blend in more with my red in just a minute, but I'm just giving them these soft edges, which is allowing that color pattern to um, just drift down the apple, put more white and on my brush, this area looks a little bit lighter to me in the photo. So just amping it up to as much as I want it to be. And then I'm gonna just kind of continue on making a second layer on these lighter marks that um, I see in the photo. So I'm still just yellow and white right now. I feel like this should be a bit brighter, this little area as it's meeting the top of the, um, the apple right in through here. So a little bit more white helps me to amp up that um, vibrancy and then just pull this out just a little bit more. And again, I like to use the side of my brush with a little bit of water on it to get these um, gradations or to get this color to just pull a little bit farther. Um, you could use bright brushes or flat brushes or blender brushes, whatever um, works for you and your painting um, techniques that, that, that work for your hand, that work for your, um, your brushes and stuff like that. That looks pretty good in through there. So now I think I'm gonna just kind of finesse up in through here. I'm gonna start to use my, um, is that dry yet? No, I'm gonna wait, wait another minute on that stem. I'm gonna start to use my red and white uh, to just kind of um, finesse this area just a little bit more, making sure I keep it light, but I have it as smooth as I want. So as I'm doing this, I I may not have needed this second layer up in through here, but I know that for me, especially when I'm following a photo, I like to get those elements or those little markings and stuff as close as I can to just get it to represent that thing that I'm supposed to be representing. So as I go through this, I know that there was a lot of, there's a lot of lightness up in through here. Um, and I didn't feel like I had gotten it as light as I should have. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that I, I hit it one more time to um, amp that up. And I also want the this transition to be a little bit better. It looks a little unfinished for me. So that's what this step is for. I just picked up a little bit more red and white. I feel I need to have a little bit brighter area in through here. So a third layer on this apple works for me. You might want, you know, just two layers. Maybe one layer works for you. But for me, when I when I'm building these and I'm, and I'm watching these color patterns and I'm watching where these contours and highlights are, I, again, I say it a hundred times, I love to layer. I love how I can achieve that, um, that realistic appearance by adding those, uh, the element of layering, just continuing to add a lighter spot or a darker spot to to represent that color pattern that I'm seeing in in that photo. I do see that this is a little unfinished up at this top edge. I'm actually going to tap into um, my brown <laughs> and my red so I can get this kind of darker tone around this edge and but still have it you could go brown and or uh, red and black too but i feel like my red and this brown will give me this really nice natural look oh yeah i'm digging that and i'm bringing it right to my hand my hand's going to be tricky along these edges because i do have um i painted the the apple first but again there's quite a bit of the apple that's underneath the hands as well so I just had to make a decision which one I wanted to finish first um, I just picked up a little bit more white in through there to finish out that this I feel like needs to be a little bit lighter so again red and white and again I'm just kind of 
um, watching that photo, getting the lighter areas to pop the way that I want them to pop, and finishing out any areas that I feel need to be finished. So this is looking pretty good. A little bit of water is going on my brush to get this um, kind of textural element over in through here. If there's a little highlight on the apple over here on the right hand side too. So a little red and white is going on my brush to take this little highlight over here. That looks pretty good. I'm seeing if there's any other highlights like that. I see one over here. So somewhere about halfway down in through here, there's a little bit of a highlight. So apples are shiny. So they're gonna have reflections on them. So as you're doing a shiny object, if just look around, see if there's other areas that um, should have light uh, shining on them. I feel like there's also some darker tones in through here. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up red with a touch of um, black and brown on my brush, so red, black, and brown. And I'm going to kind of dabble in these little darker um, kind of pattern of sorts. So again, red, black, and brown. Just kind of see, watching the photo, seeing that there's these little kind of darker areas in through here. So red, black, and brown. More red is going on my brush. And I, again, just because uh, I'm watching that photo, I've seen this this kind of dark shift in through here with the um, with the color pattern on the apple. There's a little light spot in through here, dark in through here, and then these all just kind of um, start to uh, almost transition into one another. That looks pretty good. I just need to um, this area in through here transitions to here, so red and white is going on my brush, a little bit more red than white. Wiping my brush off, that was too much white. And then just getting this to, almost kind of just tapping it, just getting this to transition again, the way that I'm seeing it in that photo is a little bit lighter in through here. So that's looking pretty good. And I would, after, it, I would let it dry clearly. And then if there's um, more I wanna do with it, I certainly would, but I gotta hit that stem real quick. Uh, a little bit light here. Actually, I feel like, this stuff should be brought up here too. So I'm gonna just hit that one more time. Red, uh, brown, and a touch of black just right up and through here. Get this a little bit darker like that. And again, based on your printer, based on the photo reference, it's funny because photos will, you know, we see something with our eyes, right? And then when we take a picture of it, the picture deletes some of that detail. Then we see it on our computer and the computer deletes some of that detail. And then we print it out and the printer deletes some of that detail. So it's really interesting and um, a challenge to, to reproduce a photo reference because you're not really seeing everything that the, that the human sees in real life. So to get these elements to convey as you know, realistic um, elements. What's this doing? This is gonna go over here, is, is a challenge. So if you're going about it and it's not exactly like a photograph, don't worry about it. It's, too, it's, a, tricky, it's a tricky thing to do. I'm washing, dry my brush, almost done with this apple here. A little bit of uh, yellow and white, just smooth this out just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna hit this stem. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black, just itty bitty bit of black, just to get the bottom of this um, stem nice and dark and I, my hand is totally in wet paint on my canvas right now. I have a red, red pinky right now. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that brown, just to, uh, brown and black, I think, just to bring this up so we can see the side of that stem in through here. That looks good. And then I'm gonna highlight that tip of the stem. I'm going in for just a touch of white to start. A little bit of white on my brush. Get my brush in control, there we go. A little bit of white on my brush, get this to be nice and, and vibrant in through here. And now I'm picking up a touch of yellow. And then just I'm just dotting it to give it um, a real vibrant type of look to it. And then you can fiddle with this all you want. I'm gonna let mine dry. And if there's anything additional that I feel 
would benefit me to um, kind of play with a little bit, I certainly will. And then we'll be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this little brush. Oh, now I'm seeing yellow, I want more yellow. You can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the hands. I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, light gray, and dark gray. And if I need any other colors, I will use them and I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna do some fine-tuned detailing, which is gonna be primarily the highlights. So I have little highlights on the tips of everywhere uh, on the hands. It's gonna be the top side of the hand. So like for, for this hand, I feel like I need to clip a little corner of that off, but anyways, for this hand, the, the top side is gonna be like this side of the, or no, excuse me, <laughs> this, this side of the, the hand up at the top, and then here it's gonna be kind of like this side. I don't always have to model my hands. I could have just pointed at the canvas, <laughs> but anyways, so it's gonna be the top side of them. I'm gonna be um, starting probably just at the top and working my way down. I will fine tune any little shadow making stuff I need to along the way. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of white paint on my brush and I don't want these to look like they're just outlined at the top and just bright at the top. So I will kind of put that color on there and then I just kind of rub it back into uh, it blending into that, that light gray. So that's where the highlight is gonna be up at the top and it, um, and it fades into the gray. The little tiny fingers like this one over here, I could probably just get away with a little tiny highlight on the tip of that one. But if, you, if yours was a little bit larger, you could certainly um, make it more dramatic down this side and through here. And you can always use a little bit of watered down white paint too. If you needed to um, spread out or blend a little bit more, you can certainly water it down a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of bring this down. It doesn't have to be a super straight line as what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of almost like given the, um, almost like one, one part of the finger, the next part of the finger, the next part of the finger. Uh, not necessary, but if you felt confident in that, feel free to do so. And then I'm just rubbing it down into um, the dark side, which is near the apple. If you felt it wasn't blending good enough, you could certainly pick up some of your light gray or and or your dark gray. Or, or if you have little um, areas that need to be finessed, you can pick up you know, your light gray or your dark gray, like in this little crevice here, I feel as though I need to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of work. So I just picked up my dark gray plus my light gray. Now I'm picking up my light gray just to work my, work my way out of this little corner. I also had some of my red that ended up landing in my finger. <laughs> so just making sure I cleaned that up. And of course, if you wanted any little extra details on that, you could certainly do so. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of smooth this out a little bit, I'm picking up a little bit of dark gray. So as I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm just thinking, I want this a little, little bit smoother in through here. So I'm allowing for um, myself to do that. So as you're doing yours, if you, if you feel that you uh, need that extra little smoothing moment, a <laughs> little extra blending, just take that moment and, and get it into a place that is pleasing to your eye because that's always where you're gonna have the most satisfaction when you're done is when you actually like it, um, which is a bonus, I guess. <laughs> so now I'm gonna just move into this thumb in through here. So I feel like I want a little bit more uh, blending in through there. So I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of my dark gray, a little bit of water, and just kind of get this. Oh, we need some black too in there. So a tiny bit of black and dark gray, just to give myself another, another shot at this area in through here with water on my brush, because that's where I get my nice smooth little edges from, and I can sneak right into those little crevices with that. 
and then I'm going to pick up um, a little bit of light gray on my dirty brush to get myself out of this little corner here with a little bit of blending like that. Just a teeny touch in through here. That looks good. A little bit more water is going on my brush. So you'll find when I, especially when I'm doing these kind of blending areas, I definitely use moisture on my brush. It just helps me. It's just, it's just my go-to blending helper. Picking up a little bit more of my light gray right now. Get uh, this top of the, or this side of his finger to blend down in through here. That works. And I'm going to put a little bit of that light white on the top. Just making sure that this works the way that I want it. That works pretty good. So now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint. I'm going to get this tip right in through here. And there probably there might be a little detection of a fingernail in through here, but I'm I'm not really seeing it. So I'm gonna pass on doing any big detail on a fingernail. If if when you're looking at this photo, if you are gonna be following this photo, photo if you detect it and you want to put it, feel free to do so. Uh, I just keep picking up some white right now. I'm gonna go right along here. This is where the lightest area is in through here. So I'm going to go for it with a bunch of white in through here, right along this knuckle in through here, and then just make sure that it blends out the way that I want it to. So I'm just softening those edges. I'm going to pick up some of my light gray right now on my dirty brush which is gonna be the color that I put next to it. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of water. Let's get this edge to blend out just a little bit more. It's great. And then just get this to blend down a little bit in through here. So because we had such a good base with it, um, with where we kind of already shadowed down these sides, I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot in through here. So I'm gonna pick up a uh, light gray plus white because it is still pretty light in through here but it's maybe not as light as up and through here so in order to keep with that contour I'm going light gray plus white so again it's just elevating um, that um, giving you another tonal value in this gray scale painting if you feel that something's flat it means that you need, uh, you need more tones in there in order to get it to look as if it is, um, it, as if it's got volume. A, a great kind of test, especially when doing colored paintings to see if you're getting that, that value that you need to um, give it the dimensional ele elements is to change it into a, a black and white or grayscale image. That'll tell you if you're if you're achieving the um, the full value scale, which is from black to white in any color. So that will help you to get those things to pop out, to get that dimension into those areas um, that are looking flat to you. So I just picked up some of my light gray because it doesn't need to be white over here. It can be a little bit darker because it's turning in and I just kind of keep knowing where I have that brightest stuff. I do want to put a little bit of brightness in through here. Her wrist looks like it's a little bit brighter as it's coming out, um, or this person. Can't keep calling it a she, because I'm not sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this light area right in through here. This is just white, and just kind of pull, uh, blend it out. So white with a little bit of water and it doesn't look like it's coming out very far so just a little bit in through here and just these little tiny nuances there's a little bit of a lightness coming out from here too so this is this part of the hand so may, this is my light gray going on in through here and I, I need to do uh, just make sure I've finessed this enough so this is my light gray right in through here I'm going to transition it with a little bit of um, dark gray so light gray plus a touch of dark gray in through here touch of water going on my brush just get this to blend out and again my blending brush that I'm using is a small round brush which you know isn't always the easiest brush to use but I love using um, you know one tool for multiple tasks I feel like there's a little highlight here too so this is one knuckle 
there's a little kind of part of the hand in through here that has a little bit of a highlight. So I'm putting that on. And this is just how I how I go about doing it. I put my base coat on. I put my um, my main highlights and shadows for my contours, and then I just start fine tune finessing it. So I just keep picking up a little bit of my um, light and dark gray right now, just to kind of get this area blended into that little highlight that I just created, and then. If I, you know, once it dries, if it doesn't dry exactly as I had planned, I can just put another little layer on it. But that's looking pretty good in through there. This needs a little bit of work, so a little bit of light gray just on this um, little tip in through here. Just making sure that this um, says what it's supposed to say. So this is like the back part of her hand in through here. So that's my light gray putting a touch of darker gray with a little bit of water right now just to on my dirty brush just to get this to blend down and then just making sure that it does what I want it to do. This might be a little dark in through here so just gonna blend that out a little bit more with a little bit of my uh well let's go a little bit of light gray plus a little bit of water in through in through here. This might be just a little bit too dark. And of course I could be using a bigger brush too, um, but I, I just wanted to really emulate those nuances. So to me, sometimes using a smaller brush forces you to um, get those areas as finished as you want them to be and makes you focus on the smaller um, nuances of it. So it's just a little bit more light gray just to get a little tiny extra bit of light in through there. So I'm going to move down in through here. I'm going to um, hit just a little bit of light gray in through this edge of the hand like this. I feel like this is going to kind of just contour into um, that darker gray area. So light gray on the edge where I wanted it the lightest and then just kind of blending it out. And again, just it blends with this um, little area in through here. So this is light and dark gray in through here, but just kind of satisfying my eye where I see that it's going to go darker as it goes in towards that apple. Just finessing it with this final layer. Now I'm picking up a little bit of dark gray just so I can get these two to um, really speak well together. A little bit of water and just get this to blend out. That looks good. That feeds my eye. Maybe a little bit more finessing in through here with a touch of light gray. There we go. That works. So I'm going to hit the other hand now. Oh, did I finish this? Yeah, that looks fine to me. So I'm going to hit the other hand now. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of white on my brush up at this little tip in through here. This almost looks like I should have should clip a little bit of this off so something like that and then just blend it down into the gray i'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black i feel like i feel like this little finger needs to be clipped a little bit <laughs> looks a little too long over here especially if it's just the little tip this part can definitely go down like that i'm washing and drying my brush because i don't need to have black <laughs> i'm gonna go pick up some more white and i'm going to put um, my bright areas on definitely here, on this edge over here, definitely up in through here. So this gets quite a bit up in through here. And again, this is the top side of this, of this finger. So I can bring a lot of this lightness down in through here, get it to blend out on those sides feel like this should have more right in through here. So white and a little bit of my light gray right in through here. Whoops, that finger just got a little bigger. That's all right. And I feel like that's looking pretty good. Just want to blend it down. So a little bit of water, get it to blend down into these little crevice. And then I'm going a little bit of dark gray plus water just to make sure that I've got this inside here as finessed as I want it. 
because I'm seeing that this is pretty darn dark in the photo right in through here. So again, black. Uh, I don't know if I said I was using black, but I just picked up a touch of black <laughs> just to get this really nice and dark up in through here. Again, just emulating what I'm seeing in the photo. And this is the time, again, where I would um, finesse any of my right near my apple if I needed to do anything more there. This looks pretty dark right in this little corner here. So I'm going to amp up that darkness right in through there. And it looks pretty good. I'm washing and drying my brush. There's too much black on it right now. And just pulling this like this. That looks pretty good. Uh, I need a little bit more light gray right up in through here. It's too dark up in through here. And I'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush to just get this whole knuckle area nice and bright so we really believe that it's at the top. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move down in a second here once I put this little bit more white on this little knuckle here. So uh, again, I'm going to do this big area in through here um, and just making sure that it is as light as I want. So white plus some of my light gray, white plus light gray, and this is going to be right in this area in through here. I'm going to, let's see, I feel like this needs to be a little, we'll get this, hold on. We need to be a little bit lighter in through here. This looks good. All in through here and then it fades down into the sides. So again, this is white plus my light gray. So it's light, but not as light as I did up there. And then we need this maybe just a little bit back in through here and a little bit more white over in through here. So again, similar to what we did on the other hand where we amped up like these kind of exterior uh, edges of the hand and then where the hand kind of bumps out the most at the top here, that's where we, we've given it the, the lighter version of the gray the, with the light gray plus a little bit of white. And then um, I'm going to get this to just blend down in through here, making sure I've hit my areas right next to my apple. Make sure those are nice and clean like that. And then I feel like I want a little bit of more light gray right in this knuckle area right here. So I feel like I went too dark um, right here, but this is dark. So there we go. That there we go, that makes me better. That makes me more happy. Just making this just a little bit lighter. There we go. Bring this just a little bit lighter. And again, that's with grayscale. It's pretty, you know, if you're looking at a black and white picture, it's pretty tough to, to say, okay, I can make all these different things happen just with black and white. And it is sim I don't want to say simply, but it is a matter of understanding just grayscale that you've got things that oops I just picked up a little yellow you've got you know a hundred different tones of gray that you could use oops I just picked up red <laughs> now my now my palette's a mess and it's and it's saying no we don't want we don't want you to pick up clean white we want you to pick up all these other things too so I'm going white with just a teeny tiny bit of my light gray um, just understanding the power of these uh of, of all the different tones that you can use it's fabulous i mean you've got so much versatility in your toolbox if you understand how to use grayscale and how to get these um these effects with just two colors and if if you can accomplish that and un and can get your painter skills to understand how to convey all of these different tones and get them to to work together and to create these dimensional elements your 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 colored paintings will increase exponentially because you'll be able to give them so much dimension without um without a second thought it just it just makes you more knowledgeable and makes you understand how to do those effects without struggling over you know understanding every single um 
different color needed. It's just a matter of going light to dark. It's a matter of that contrast. And if you can master that, the, the grayscale aspect of it, you're, you're far ahead of the game. <laughs> so I'm going to go in more with my light gray and white doing something similar to how I did over here. I've got um, some little light areas kind of in through here. I feel this needs to be a little bit lighter. So I just amped that up a little bit more as it was drying. It dried a little bit too dark. And then I'm just going to kind of finish out this little section in through here. I'm just put in a little bit of water on my brush. Just I don't feel like I need to do much. So if you're going through a process and you're like, well, it looks pretty good the way that it is, and you don't feel that you need to do another layer, then don't. You know, you don't have to um, keep working it if you feel that, you know, what you've what you wanted to do is done. I just added a touch more of my dark gray just to get that to blend just an itty bitty bit more. And then in through here, I'm feeling like this is pretty good. Um, just maybe a little bit more finessing with my dark gray in through here. And then just blending it out. Get that to disappear in through there. A little bit of um, black and water is going on my brush right now because I want to get this little crevice in through here. And then we're going to be, um, once you've got this done, I feel like, I don't really feel like I need to do much of anything down here. Just maybe a little bit more light gray and white just maybe on this little palm area maybe or this little wrist area, something like that. So um, I'm feeling like mine is as good as it needs to be at this point. I will let it dry and if I feel that there's any more finessing that would um, benefit me, I will do that. And then we're gonna be using, um, we're gonna use uh, probably our, our medium and our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can uh, wash this brush and get this brush and your medium brush out and ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the sleeves. I'm gonna be using my small and my medium brush to do this. To do this, the colors that I'm gonna use are black, white, dark gray, and light gray. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strategically go through, add some additional textural elements that are going to make it very similar to, or a good representation of a faux finish for the type of um, sleeves that this, uh, I think young person was wearing. So I'm going to start with my medium brush and I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of my light gray plus a touch of water on my brush. So light gray plus a touch of water. And what I'm doing, I initially had gone this way with my um, brush marks. Now I'm going to be doing a diagonal type of brush mark, but I don't want a lot of paint. I just want a, a, a little bit of paint plus a touch of water. This is going to um, start or give me uh, a little bit better of um, the faux finish. And I'm gonna kind of go around her arm a little bit. It, it, instead of it going super, um, Di uh, super straight like down it's got to be a little bit diagonal so if you just kind of make um, a mark let's say like here and then just go to the bottom and a little bit to the right that'll give you kind of um, the first you know just somewhere to start with and you can kind of make a lot of little marks going you could even curve them a little bit that'll just give you a head start as to um, the direction. They may even, you know, change directions a little bit over in through here. Just know it doesn't have to be anything perfect. I'm just going for the illusion of this um, type of fabric that she's wearing. So I keep adding a little bit of water with my light gray onto my brush. I don't want them to be super solid lines. I'm just giving um, this illusion. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of do that on this one. And again, I kind of keep kind of go back up and up and down just so there's a whole bunch of those marks. I'm going to do the same thing over on the left side, but I've got to watch the direction of this finish and it almost, um, actually it's going to go this way. So I'm going to go, um, let me just make myself kind of my first one starting maybe somewhere over in through here and then just kind of 
Once I've got one, I can kind of follow that pattern. Um, over here, I see that it's maybe a little bit more at a different diagonal. So I just know as I transition from one side to the other, I can, um, I can curve it just a little bit more. So again, just my light gray plus a little bit of water. This is, there's a little like bend in her, uh, in the fabric here. So there's a light spot here and then it kind of shifts a little angle in through here. So just kind of trying to capture that a little bit. And then there's even, it looks like there's even a little um, kind of bend where the seam goes, but I, I, you don't really need to <laughs> go that, that invasive, but if you do, if you want to, you can do as I'm doing I'm just, um, I, I kind of split it where it was gonna bend a little bit and just kind of gave a little bit different of an angle. Um, but again, not totally necessary. This is just, sometimes I have um, a little uh, anal retentiveness in my brain when it comes to details. So sometimes when I'm do, working on photographs, that's why I, I, I don't always work on them because I know that my brain is like, but you want to do all those details, don't you? <laughs> so as I'm doing them, it's like, no, no, you don't need to. <laughs> so I have a I have a constant battle in my brain when I'm doing, um, especially like little faux finishes and stuff like this, where I know it looks a certain way and get trying to get it to look that way is, you know, super challenging and fun for me. So if it, um, you know, helps uh, with my skill set, I love to I love to challenge myself, but that's looking pretty good for me. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch brushes, um, but I feel like this is a little bit closer knit than this one is. I'm actually going to add a couple more lines over on um, this side to make it resemble more of that one. So this one, I just want to add a couple more, couple more lines in through here just to get it to look a little bit more. Um, so they look like they're the same from the same kind of material. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to switch brushes to my small brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the seam. There's like some stitching and stuff. I'm going to use um, a little bit of watered down black paint to do this. So black paint with a little bit of water in it. And this is going to um, just tell me where all the little seams are. I don't necessarily want a super straight or a super solid line. So I'm gonna kind of skip my, my brush along the way. So I've got this one in through here. So just kind of skipping my brush, kind of almost like tapping it. So I have some um, dark marks that are gonna look like little shadows underneath the, um, the stitch that I'm gonna be doing in, in a minute, but not, um, I don't need it to be a solid line. So I'm just kind of tapping my brush in that area that I want that um, that stitch seam to go. There's one, there's another one kind of down in this vicinity. So just kind of tapping my brush to give me, these are going to end up being the shadows underneath the little stitches. Mm -hmm. There's um, one kind of over in through here and it kind of rides along this top edge up here. So again, I'm just using black with a little bit of water on my brush in order to get um, these little lines. This is where the sleeve kind of turns and just kind of rides down this way in through here. There's another one of these um, seams kind of going down here and over in through here. And again, just kind of tap in my brush. I could always enhance this later if I needed um, more of a solidness to it, but right now this just gives me that, that idea of where those are. So now that I've got that on, I'm gonna start adding some, some light marks. Um, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up uh, my light gray and you could certainly use water. I, I like to, like at this point, I'm using a little bit of water just so I have some clean, cleaner um, lines. Um, actually, I think I need to go lighter than that. I'm going, 
I'm going, um, I'm actually making myself an ultra light gray. <laughs> so I'm going light gray with white and I'm, I'm pre-mixing it because I'm going to, I'm going to use this a bunch of places. So this is, this will be my ultra light gray. <laughs> extra, extra light gray. So this is going to amplify all of this little tweed pattern in through here. So how am I going to do this? We're going to take uh, this light color and just kind of make these little tapping hatch type marks. Um, I'm going to do them on these um, sideways ones like this. So let's see, I'm going to just kind of tap these little hatch marks. Uh, you don't have to do these perfect little rows, um, but if you wanted to have some, you know, similar type of appearance, then great. Again, I'm just kind of um, trying to emulate some sort of similar type of um, uh, fabric but I'm not going to drive myself crazy with all these, you know, million little hatch marks. So if you, if, but I do want some of them. <laughs> I do know that there's a couple of areas that have big, um, almost like, um, uh, um, rippled threaded type of, um, area. So I've got one of these areas kind of in through here. So I'm going to take this ultra light gray and just kind of make this almost like she's worn this this jacket quite a bit and she's got some areas that are ready to start fraying so i'm going to put a couple of those little areas in through here something like that there's another little area i would say somewhere down in through here so again just kind of using that ultra light gray and then i can certainly just make you know as many of these little marks as I want to make it look, you know, as hyper realistic as I want. I'm also going to use this ultra light gray along the edges like this to get um, some some little marks going on. And ooh, I think I went the wrong direction, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of go like this, just tapping it along that edge to get a nice brightness up in through here. Uh, coming down here, I'm going to use more of my light gray because I, in my head it would go darker down in through here. I'm going to use this ultra, uh, I'm going to actually use regular light gray to accentuate these little um, seams where I just did the dark ones. There's, uh, that, that was the shadow going across. So now I'm just adding a lighter version of gray to go across here and here like this and just get it to kind of disappear down there. So any, you know, again, the trick is to get it to have the varying shades of gray. So as you're going through this process, if you're saying that's just, you know, I don't want to make a million little hatch marks. If, if you wanted to just do a lighter version or um, get these, these little, um, uh, the um, uh, texture, I guess, is the word I'm, I'm looking for on these guys. You can do all different kinds of um, ways to, to create them. But as I do them, a lot of times I just, I think I need it messy to get this kind of uh, almost like an impressionistic textural type of effect. But in this gray scale, it's just uber important to use different tones. That's why right now I have three different shades of gray on my palette. That's going to force me, okay, now I'm using my ultra light. Okay, now I'm using my light. Okay, now I'm using my dark. And at least that gives you a good jumping point where you don't have to um, fear not having enough tones in it. So just as you're, as you're going through your process, I keep using the, the light gray at this point, uh, the ultra light gray. Uh, as you're going through your process, oh, I like this better than that um, systematic approach on the other one. As you're going through your process of, you know, doing these kind of uh, faux finishes or grayscale kind of thing, it's just a matter of kind of dissecting the um, a, a simplified construction process. And for me, 
I, you know, when I'm doing grayscale, I know I need multiple tones. I know that that's how I'm going to achieve what I want to achieve, but I can't forget about the, the contrast and the form and all that other stuff that makes up um, that visual illusion. Even if, you know, you don't necessarily need to understand, you know, like when you're doing hands, you don't necessarily need to understand the anatomy. I'm, I key, uh, I'm picking up my light gray right now. You don't necessarily need to know the anatomy of the hands, but if you can read and understand where those contours and shadows and the different tones and values go, you, you've done it. You don't, you know, you've, you've conquered it. You, you'll be able to paint it. And when I'm doing these textural effects, I'm just watching those patterns. I, I just picked up some white paint. I'm watching the color patterns, the textural effects. I, I don't, I don't need to know what kind of fabric this is. I don't need to know what color this fabric is. I'm just going with what I'm seeing in these kind of cool textural type of effects and I'm just trying to emulate them with my brush and with different colors or with different shades of this. I, I'm digging this one. I think I need a little bit more work on this guy over here. Um, I'm going with that ultra uh, light gray again. I think I need some darker stuff. I'm going, um, I just actually wiped my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of black paint right now. I feel like I want um, some, like I need some extra, some little darker marks in through here. I feel like it's almost like too two dimensional for me. So I just picked up some little bit of darkness. I feel like I want a little bit more darkness down at this bottom in through here. Um, so I'm just tapping in some marks in that, uh, in the little, in between those little, um, hatch marks that I made previously. So just kind of tapping in some little darkness in through there, maybe a little bit more darkness over in through here. And now that I, this is that stage where now that I have everything in place, I understand where I want things to go. I, I understand how I want to create that texture. Even if I'm not fully satisfied with it yet, I have my process in place. I'm doing my hatch marks. That's where I want to take, that's, that's the process I'm using to create this illusion. Um, and once I've got that in, in place and where all of my pieces of the puzzle are, now I can just start kind of fiddling and saying, okay, well, it looks good, but I think I could use a little bit more shadow over here or highlight over there or more definition in this little guy here. So as I'm going through my process, that's what that's what I'm looking for right now. I'm using a little bit of watered down black paint. I'm putting some little kind of lines in between this guy and through here because that's what I'm detecting in, in the picture. And then I would just, now that I've got my, my process down, I would, oops, that was white on my brush, but I didn't expect it. I would sit here and fiddle with it. You know, I've got my, I want a little bit more darkness up and through here so we can see that edge of the, of the sleeve a little bit better. Maybe I put a little bit more darkness over on this side over here. So right now I'm just kind of playing with some, some watered down black paint in order to um, just kind of add a little bit more depth into some of these marks so you can, you know, so certain aspects can pop out a little bit more. And then um, I definitely feel like I want a little, couple of little dark areas in, in throughout these hatch marks so that we can see that they have a little bit more texture to them. So if it's looking too flat, then you definitely need more contrast. So for me, I'm just adding these uh, additional little dark marks throughout. But again, I'm still trying to hold true to that um, a, a representation, be it loose um, representation of that um, type of fabric. And I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I think I want a little bit more, maybe, uh, what do I want up here? Uh, I'm going a little bit the the um, watered down black paint just to 
give me just a little maybe more definition in some of these guys over here. And again, I'm do doing this so loose. You you know, that's one thing that I had to, um, when, when picking this photo to do, it's one thing to um, pick a, a, a photo to, you know, emulate and stuff, but when it's got an element like this that has tons and tons of hyper detail in it, you got to just kind of say, all right, how far do I want to bring it? Do I want to um, bring it all the way? Do I want to bring it representational? And for me, I'm just choosing to go in a representational type of a way, but you can still get an idea of how to create this fun faux finish. And then once you've got that done, fiddle with it as much as you want. I'm picking up just a little bit more white paint to just kind of cap off this edge over in through here, we're going to be using um, this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush if you can ever stop. This is one of those fun things that once you start going, it's tough to stop. Um, but once you've got yours done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I am going to be going bottom left on this one with, uh, I'm gonna go black paint. And I like to sign mine with my initials. I'm going small brush, I don't know if I said that. Um, I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could of course, use your first name or the date or make a special symbol, whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very cool gray scale with a pop of color <laughs> type of painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.